Welcome to the Rent to Rent Success Podcast, all about creating consistent cash flow, escaping the nine to five, and really living life on your terms. This is the only podcast entirely dedicated to helping you achieve rent to rent success. It's our place to inspire each other to believe bigger, to be bolder, and to be game changers for good. I'm Stephanie Taylor, your guide on this exciting ride. Let's start up the engines and get ready to fly. Hello, 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 Stephanie here, and welcome to the 19th episode of the Rent to Rent Success podcast. Today's episode is about the subject that I love, rent to rent letters. This is the thing that helped us grow HMO heaven fast. And But there are lots of myths out there, and today's episode is all about what makes rent to rent letters work. And it's how to be irresistible to your perfect customers. And I know that if you stick with me on this episode, you're going to get some new insights and takeaways here. And first of all, I want to thank eBob, who left us a review on Apple Podcasts. And E said, they take a very complicated thing and break it down to baby steps. And it's clear and understandable and useful. And this, thank you, eBob. Thanks so much for that review. That's absolutely what we aim to do. And if you haven't left a review yet, please leave a review. Those words on Apple Podcasts. And we're still giving to our charities for every review that you give. Thanks so much for doing that. Let's dive in with the letters. First of all, I'll get back to basics in case you're wondering what letters am I talking about? So with rent to rent our aim is to manage HMO properties, also known as house shares. And one of the best ways to let HMO landlords know about our existence is to write letters to them. We can do this because the names and addresses of HMO landlords are available to the public. And it's a super successful strategy. We get most of our new properties through the direct marketing letters. It's the way that you can speak directly to your customers. There's a phenomenal return on landlord letters too when you do them right. The landlord letters cost us less than the price of a first class stamp for each letter. And so far, we've brought in contracts worth over £2 million. And later in the episode, I'll explain how you can sign up to receive two of our marketing letters to get the phones ringing in your business. You know why you know why landlords want to work with you. If you missed that episode, go back and listen to episode five. You'll find it in your podcast app or at renttorentsuccess.com slash five for episode five. This is all about how to put why landlords want to work with you down on paper. And the question that people ask me is, but do letters really work? So many people are sending letters out. How do I stand out from the crowd? And this is the secret to letters that work. It's clearly solving the landlord problem in their language and creating enough interest in your solution to cause landlords to want to phone you to find out more. That's so obvious. I hear you cry. That's not a secret, Steph. Well, if that's the case, why do we see so many letters that don't do this? What not to do? One of our landlords keeps all the letters that he receives from people wanting to rent his HMO. And recently he brought a batch in for us. And I was totally shocked that about 80% of them had a very, very similar wording. So here are a few of the top don'ts. Don't focus on what you want. Let me give you an example from one of the letters. It said, we are looking to acquire eight domestic multi-let properties in the area. And we are aware that some landlords are looking to get out of the business. And we were wondering if you were considering or would consider selling any of your properties. Now, that's quite a clunky sentence anyway. But what it talks about is what the writer wants. We wanting to acquire. We want to buy the properties, basically, rather than what the reader wants. So... That's the first thing. So don't focus on what you want. Don't use clunky business speak. 
For example, using th- phrases like HMO stroke multilets, it's clunky. Make your language feel conversational, like talking to a person rather than talking to a business. Next don't is don't speak to your reader impersonally. So the end of one of the letters, for example, said, for those who are interested, please contact blah, blah, blah. And it's better to say something like, if you are interested, contact blah, blah, blah. That's speaking directly to your reader. The next don't is don't apologize for writing to them. So a number of the letters that I saw started off, I hope you don't mind me writing to you. I found your contact details on the Imagine Land, let's just say, Council Online Register of HMO Landlords. You know, the opening line is apologetic and unnecessary, and it positions you as the writer as being of low value. You've got a great solution for a difficult problem, so don't apologize for sharing it with people. And finally, don't end with a weak call to action. Be clear about what you want your readers to do next and what's in it for them. What I want to say to you is don't send one of these copycat letters that have got no personality or or authenticity. So many people are writing to landlords that it is important to stand out. And the simplest and most effective way to be unique is to be you. So this really does work if you do it right. So let's move on from what not to do to what to do. And sitting in front of a blank piece of paper can feel daunting. Even professional writers can find this difficult. That's why at the end of this episode, I'm going to share with you a link for you to download two of our letters which have worked brilliantly well. So what should you write? Start with your customer. Focus on the landlord's problems and how you solve them. Talk your customer's language. And to do that, really listen to what people say when they're talking to you about the problems that they're having with their HMO. Use those words. The number one aim of your letter is to inspire landlords to call you to find out more. So you want to give the sizzle and not the steak. Don't overwhelm them with too much information. And you'll see in the templates examples of, of how to do that. So how to send your letters. I'm going to be controversial here. The old guard says that you should handwrite your envelopes and use colored envelopes. And I don't agree at all. Here's why. People suggest that you should handwrite your envelopes because landlords are much more likely to open them. So is this true? It's hard to know, actually. What is definitely true, though, is that the more letters you send to your target customers and the more consistently you send them, the more leads you will get. And this is where handwriting will stop you from getting the results you want. Let me explain. Handwriting your envelopes is very time consuming. And usually that means that you're going to end up sending fewer letters. And you'll send fewer letters each time and you'll send the letters less often. And that is where your results will be lower than other people who are automating. And yes, you could outsource the handwriting of the envelopes. This then adds another unnecessary expense as you can get great results without it. So when you automate the sending of personalized letters, which resonate with your reader's problems, and when you send the right number of letters each time, and when you do it consistently, you will get results. So in short, you don't need to handwrite your envelopes to get good results. Are you ready to take the next step? But you still have so many questions unanswered. We got you. You can get your free Rent to Rent Success Guide at renttorentsuccess.com slash guide. That's rent number two, rentsuccess.com slash guide. And it'll walk you through what Rent to Rent is all about. And you'll see whether it's right for you. Okay, then. Now let's get back to today's show. Should you use colored envelopes? We heard this advice about write, handwriting the envelopes and using colored envelopes when we were starting out in 2016. And we looked into it. We found, to our surprise, that envelopes were, uh, colored envelopes are expensive. 
And also, I didn't relish the idea of writing out over 300, 600, 900, 1200 addresses or organizing outsourcing it to a virtual assistant and arranging for them to get delivery of envelope stamps and all of the rest of it. So we decided, you know what, let's try automation, see if it works. We tried a few different companies, but we found that Stamp was the best. Each letter that we send through Stamp is cheaper than the price of a first class stamp. So if we actually did it by hand, it would take us days, if not weeks, to get our letters done. And we'd need to pay for colored envelopes. We'd need to pay for paper. We'd need to pay for ink cartridges. We'd need to print the letters. We'd need to do a mail merge. We'd need to buy the stamps. It looked like it would it would cost us more than double to DIY our letters. So we tried stamp and our results were so good that we never wanted to try DIY. When we first started using Stamp, they didn't offer the coloured envelopes, but they are now offering this. There's an extra charge for it. We use the white window envelopes and we're just, we're delighted with the results we get from that. So you can do it brilliantly without need for handwriting or using coloured envelope to get great results. So then how does Stamp work? I've been surprised by how many people don't know about Stamp. And they were going to send their letters by hand. Well, you're going to love this system because it helps you send more letters in less time. And actually, it does it for less money as well. So you've got no complicated mail merge. You don't have to print hundreds of letters. You don't have to buy the multicolored envelopes. You don't have to do handwriting the addresses on those envelopes. Yes, this is what people are doing. I'm sure the handwritten address on the first envelope looks great, but what about the address on the 50th envelope or the 250th envelope or the 500th envelope? And then you've got the matching the right handwritten envelope with the right letter. Then you've got manually stuffing all those envelopes, sticking the stamps on the envelopes, hundreds of them all by hand. And with stamp, you have none of that. Here's how it works. You have one electronic copy of your letter. You have one spreadsheet with your landlord name and address data in it. You upload your letter to Stamp and you have tags of where the first name should be inserted and where the address should be inserted. You send that all to Stamp and Stamp does the rest. The first name and the address will appear specific to each individual landlord. And this enables you, your letter to include a personalized greeting such as Dear Nikki or Hi Nikki, rather than a generic greeting such as Dear Landlord. And it enables your envelopes to include Nikki Taylor and the address rather than just the address automatically. And how much does all this cost, Stephanie? That, my friend, is the best part. As I've mentioned earlier, because I can't help myself, it costs less than the price of a first class stamp. So you simply can't beat them on price by buying paper, colored envelope, print cartridges, stamps, and all the rest of it. What matters, though, is the results. Contracts worth over two million from letters. Crazy talk. If you want to check them out, I'll put the link in the show notes. We have got a special link. It's rent number two rent success dot com slash stamp and stamp is spelled S T A N for November N for November P and we'll put the link. So it's rent rent success dot com slash stamp. And if you use that link, if you've loved getting help from us all about this and you use this link, uh, stamp do give us a thank you of a few pennies each person who signs up. But we're sharing this with you because we've used it. Since 2016 till now, we love it. We've tried some of the others. We don't find them so good. And that's why we're happy to recommend Stamp. The main thing, though, about your letters, however you choose to send them, is to send them. Landlords can't know you, can't ring you if they don't know you exist. So let them know. Send your letters and let them know very soon. Like so many things in life, One is not enough. You need to be consistent. Make sure that you send your letters out regularly, whether it's every month, every two months or every three months. You decide what's best for you. Consistency helps you to stay front of mind. Even if a landlord doesn't call you immediately, they often save your letters. We've viewed properties where landlords pull out a stack of our letters. 
So get your letters sent. Let me summarize what we talked about today. Here's the summary of what to say in your landlord letters. Focus on them and not you. Make your letter focus on solving the landlord's problems using landlord's language. And make it about the sizzle and not the steak. Don't overwhelm with detail. The only job of your letter is to make a landlord want to call you to find out more. So I mentioned earlier the free rent to rent letters that we've got the templates that you can download. And you can get those at renttorentsuccess.com slash letters. And if you'd also like our full 5P formula of everything to include in your landlord letters, plus more templates, we also have that at our shop, renttorentsuccess.com slash shop. And you'll see the landlord letters there, which also includes the 5P formula of everything to include in your letters. Let's summarize how to send your letters now. Use stamp, as we've talked about. It's impossible to send your letters for less. A stamp is less than the price of a stamp. You'll send more letters more consistently with an automated system. That means you'll get more leads. You can schedule your letters for months ahead of time, so you don't have to spend time each month on it. You could spend, you know, a few hours one day and and tee up all your letters for the next six months. Do what most people don't do and you'll get results that most people don't get. We have covered a lot today again, haven't we? If you'd like to see all of this written down, check out the show notes at renttorentsuccess.com slash 19. That's rent number two, renttorentsuccess.com slash 19. No, 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 19. I could resist. And if you have found this podcast useful, please review us on Apple Podcasts and say, yeah, this is a good podcast. And I'll see all y'all next week. Until next week, have an amazing rest of the week. And remember, believe bigger, be bolder, be a game changer. See you soon. Thank you so much for listening. If you like the links for anything mentioned in today's episode, or if voice is not enough and you want to see us on video too, you can find all the show notes and lots more at renttorentsuccess.com. That's rent number two, renttorentsuccess.com. If you've enjoyed today's episode, we'd super appreciate it if you would take a few minutes to review it in your podcast app. Remember, we'll be donating to our B1G1 charities too for each review you give. Until then, believe bigger, be bolder, be a game changer.